Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Thousands of Nigerian women and girls are lured to Europe each year with the promise of work, but they end up trapped in debt bondage and forced into prostitution. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking and Person, NAPTIP, is trying a new approach to prevent women's exploitation abroad by sharing inspirational stories of women who made it at home in a campaign tagged Not For Sale in which women talk about how they were tempted by Europe, but instead pursued their dreams and found success in Nigeria. Let's take a look. Benin City is sweet, but it can also be tough too. Three years ago, things were so hard for me, my two children and my widow mother. When my friend in your boss told me about traveling to Germany, guy, I moved. We left Nigeria, but only made it to Libya, where we were sold. I live in a brothel, where I was raped and tortured. I saw many Nigerians die, including my friend in Yobo. I was deported, came back to meet my family, the same way I left them. I was so ashamed and depressed. Thankfully, I met people who renewed my hope by encouraging me and registering me in a vocation center. Today, I'm a proud baker in Benin. I now make enough money to take care of my family. I have new dreams and a new thinking. In my country, I have freedom. Growing up, I had always loved drawing and painting, but my father, on the other hand, didn't. At the time, things were so tough that I had to stop schooling. I used to hope different things just to survive. I had heard about how girls go to Europe and blow, but I also heard horrible stories. Man, I quickly decided that part was not for me. Why go and suffer where I cannot be free? I continued my hustle. My levels changed when my friend's father saw my painting and paid cash for it. Bam! Since then, different people here and overseas have been buying my artworks thanks to my painting. I am now in my final year in Unipen, making good money on the side. I also run a workshop for young girls for free. Soon, I will be able to travel abroad for hours. Today, I'm my family's pride and joy. My name is Blessing Osagedu Alegema, and I am not for sale. My name is Gift Ojo Jonathan. I am not for sale. Well, quite an interesting, uh, mm. you know, take there on uh, the challenge of modern slavery and those who have managed to survive. But joining us now to speak on how we can all join hands to end modern slavery is the general, Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okadonley. Good morning. Good, good morning, morning, Dame Okadonley. Thank Okadonle. you for having me. Yes, good morning. Thank you for coming to the morning show. Good morning. Show. Yes. Um, that, uh, Thank you for having me. That tape that was played uh, just now about the not for sale campaign. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see that uh, some young ladies have been uh, rescued. But in spite of all the uh, efforts and the collaborative, uh, you know, steps being taken by your agency, you know, and uh, the United Kingdom government and others, uh, it looks like the situation is still very bad. Uh, only uh, in 2018, uh, we were told in the uh, Global Slavery Index that Nigeria has a population of about 1.348 uh, million uh, persons uh, still involved in uh, modern slavery, and that's the highest figure in West Africa and in Africa. Uh, what exactly is the challenge? Why is the problem of human trafficking and new slavery uh, so intractable? Well, you know that human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar um, business. So a lot of people are seeing it as an easy way out because the profits are very high and the risk is indeed very low. But don't forget that there are still a lot of women, Nigerian women, that are trapped in slavery and they're not necessarily still going out to be trafficked. I believe that the figures have dropped going out because there's a lot of awareness going on now. So many youths are now aware. Um, even with the launch, you know, prevention, like I keep saying, is better than cure. We keep carrying out preventive measures. We keep raising awareness. And with the recent launch, which was done two days ago, with our, uh, the aid of our British partners, the UK aid, we hope that it's going to send a very strong signal 
to the youth. Um, you know, it's the, the caption is very catchy. I am not for sale. And it's going to go viral on the social media, not just in the social media. Also, there are going to be billboards everywhere. There are going to be radio programs in the local languages, in Pidgin English and all of that. Raising awareness is not a one-off um, business. It is a work in progress. It is something that we're going to be doing for a very long time. And it's going to have a very good effect. I, you can, I can bet on that. Um, we're going to first start with Edo and Delta states, because those are the two states um, that rank highest in terms of um, internal and external human trafficking. And so I would believe that with that, the numbers are going to reduce considerably. But I can assure you that these figures that are being mentioned are those that have been tracked in various countries and are desirous of coming back home. And we will get them back home. What is making you so confident that this new approach would work? I mean, at the last check, there are 23.1% unemployed youth in Nigeria, and that's about uh, 20 million people. It is not so much as to these people don't know the dangers in being lured to Europe. Uh, they are aware of opportunities here, but I think that the problem is the lack of these opportunities in mass and for them to be able to, you know, explore those opportunities. So why are you so confident that this new approach will work? I'm very confident because the truth is that a lot of people are very ignorant. You know, they still have this mindset that anything outside Nigeria is better than Nigeria, which is absolutely false. But the truth is, with these young girls coming out, now we have live examples. You know, sometimes when you talk, and you don't see. That's why they say action speaks louder than voice. When you talk and you don't see, you're bound, you're bound to doubt. Now we have young girls who have made it. Some that went there and came back. Some that haven't gone there, but were tried, they tried to induce them to go, go there, but they didn't go. So now they are going to be seeing live examples. These are our ambassadors who are also going to be talking to their peers, you know, that, look, I was there before. And it's not, you know, as not, it's not as rosy as you think. You're better off in your country. It's, it's going to change the narratives. This um, campaign is going to change the mindset of the youths, which is very, very important. That orientation is the most important thing. Once the mindsets are changed, because we have a lot of youths doing very well here, so many of them don't even know there are opportunities. We're going to be putting them, this out for them to see that there are opportunities they can key into here in Nigeria. A lot of them don't even bother to read. So we're going to put out these opportunities. So we're not just going to be talking. We're also going to put the opportunities for them to see so they can key into the opportunities and we will encourage them to key into the opportunity. So I'm very, very confident that this will work. Well, I like the way you are emphasizing, uh, you know, the threat of ignorance and the need for greater advocacy and public enlightenment. I mean, we can't do, you know, uh, enough advocacy on this subject. But don't you see the need for, you know, more creative thinking on the part of government at all levels? Uh, a more expanded involvement because many of these persons who are victims of modern slavery and who are Nigerians, um, they say they are disillusioned with Nigeria, as you yourself have said. Uh, they say government is not serving the purpose of the citizens. And recently, when uh, some persons were brought back from Libya and uh, also Egypt, um, some of them openly on television were saying after a few weeks, particularly in Edo State, that they would rather go back to the slave camps in Libya. I don't know whether you are aware of this and then what government yes. can really do to restore confidence in the country itself. Yes, like I said earlier, there are lots of opportunities for them. We have the Empire program. We have so many programs for young entrepreneurs. But most of them are ignorant. They are not even aware that things like this exist. Federal government has done so much 
to ensure that their job creations, everyone cannot work in an office. We can never have enough jobs for everyone. So it is time for them to also have creative thinking. It's not creative thinking is not just for the federal government. Each and every one of us must be creative in our thinking as well. So it's time for them to bring out the creativity in them because they have it. We have lots of youths who are IT serve, uh, savvy and they can create and, 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 and make um, apps, you know, for, you know, so there's so much they can do with themselves. So we're going to be putting these opportunities out for them and telling them that there are opportunities. And mind you, um, uh, creating jobs is not just for, about the federal government. Everyone keeps talking about the federal government. The state governments also have a role to play. Local governments have a role to play. The state government has to empower the rural women who are the mothers of these, these girls because they all come from various states of Nigeria. So everyone has a role to play. It's not a federal government thing. Yes, the federal government is doing its bit. The state government will do its bit. And that is why we've decided to set up task forces in the 36 states of Nigeria. Nigeria. Edo State already has a task force and we've gone there to train them a few weeks ago. We set up the task force in Delta State. We also set up another task force in um, Ondo State. We're going to set up task forces in a whole 36 states. So these task forces are now going to take human trafficking as their state project. The state government will own the project and they will take it as their project and ensure that they tackle the root causes in their various states. And once this is achieved, then I can assure you that human trafficking will be reduced to the very barest minimum. Well, see, uh, you said there are two types, you know, modern slavery internally and then, you know, the people who go to Europe to look for a job and they get into uh, sex slavery and all kinds of bondage. But here in Nigeria, there's a particular phenomenon that I would like you to address. This is a phenomenon of housemates. Uh, many households have housemates who assist working mothers, but I understand that NAPTIP does not encourage this. Um, don't you think that, you know, the housemate culture is something uh, that is dictated by our cultural and social reality? And the fact, of course, that, well, if you look at it at another level, it's also a way of creating jobs for those young persons, particularly if they are above 18. NAPTIP does not have a problem with an adult housemaid that is treated very well. We have an, a problem with young, underage house elves that should be in school and who are working as slaves in the homes of a lot of us. Now, even if you have a young or an adult house elf, he or she is entitled to be treated very well with dignity but there are lots of homes where the house elves are treated like slaves and all sorts of evil perpetrated on them we have rescued so many house elves from homes of people who you think should know better you know they've poured hot oil on them hot water on them they've in inflicted grievous harm and injury on them they've destroyed them psychologically and it goes on in so many homes in nigeria so we are telling people the fact that you have a house help does not mean you should treat them like slaves they are not your slaves you treat them with some dignity and we also have a problem with those who pay agents instead of paying the house helps money they have these agents who go to the various communities and distribute house helps in people's homes and and these agents are now paid the salaries of people. We even recently arrested someone who had paid the salary of a house help one year in advance to the agent. Who does that? I mean, it, it obviously shows that she's just a slave. Someone is working for you from day, day and night in your home, and you're there paying the salary to someone else who brought her for you, and this girl is not in school. She's just there. So the girl was rescued from the home and will continue to rescue girls and prosecute people that fall into that category. Let me take you back to the North for Sale campaign. Um, earlier, you mentioned local factors responsible for this. Generally, factors such as conflict and poverty are said to increase vulnerability of women and girls. But from the experiences we've heard from those who are returning from Libya, we said that some of these people pay as much as half a million to make this treacherous journey uh, through the Mediterranean. What would you say are the leading factors responsible for this vulnerability uh, among Nigerian women and young girls? 
like I've always said, poverty is not the factor. It's one of the factors. But a major factor is simply ignorance and the mindset of these people. I mean, because they pay as much as half a million to one million to be trafficked. If I have half a million, one million, I know I can make something out of it here in Nigeria. But the ignorance level amongst these people is really, really high. And so that is why we are carrying out this massive awareness campaign on, 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 on you know, to change their mindset. You know, changing the mindset is key. And we are embarking on that, and we are going to achieve that. So tell us more about this Not For Sale campaign, really. What does it entail? We know you are doing this in collaboration with the United Kingdom. What exactly is this Not For Sale campaign? It's a um, Not For Sale campaign. It's, just, it's a communication strategy. It's, you know, it's, it's just a strategy to you know, send the message out, like changing the mindsets, changing the narratives of our youths. I am not for sale. You are not for sale. They are not for sale. We are not for sale. So when these traffickers go to the mothers, the mothers tell them, sorry, they are not for sale. And the, the victims, the, the potential victims tell them, sorry, we are not for sale. We don't need to go anywhere to get these jobs. We can work in Nigeria and make something meaningful for ourselves. It's just it's a slogan that is going to intended to go viral so people can begin, begin to feel a self-worth. Most of those who are trafficked have a very low self-esteem. So we are trying to build their confidence and their self-esteem to make them have belief in themselves and to believe in their country and to make them know that they don't need to leave Nigeria to become somebody. And that's just the catch. That's the idea behind it. Well, some of the reports on this uh, crisis indicate that, particularly in Nigeria, uh, airport officials tend to... Um, assist those who smuggle underage girls out of the country, and that uh, the Department of Immigration sometimes is also a uh, complicit. What is your agency doing to address this? Well, unfortunately, NAPTIP is not at the airports. Uh, we are still trying to see if it is possible for NAPTIP to be stationed at the airports. It is only when we are stationed at the airports that I can give account of what is happening. But as long as we are not manning the borders, I cannot give account of what goes on at the borders. I can only give account of what is going on in Nigeria, within in the cities, in the rural areas. But I can't say much concerning that. I but, really don't know but, but how, much how effort, to respond to How that. much effort do you invest in interagency collaboration? One would expect that in an agency like NAPTIP uh, will be uh, collaborating with immigration, with uh, the airport authorities, with the uh, border uh, patrol officials, with uh, transportation unions, you know, and even also with the law enforcement agency. Is there any synergy at this level between NAPTIP and these other uh, related relevant agencies? Absolutely. I mean, we can't do this job alone. We have a synergy, we have a relationship with all the law enforcement agencies. But don't forget that these other law enforcement agencies also have their core mandate, which, and their core mandate is not human trafficking. So no one can be as committed as NAPTIP in, in the area of human trafficking. And so if NAPTIP is stationed at the borders, then of course we know that this human trafficking will be reduced to the barest minimum because that's our core mandate and our responsibility to stop human trafficking. Well, at the last check, about 339 people have been convicted as traffickers uh, by your agency. Uh, but that seems not to be sending home the point that, you know, human trafficking is a crime and it's punishable. Uh, perhaps do you think that because they still get a slap on the wrist, and uh, that's why this is uh, still, you know, very much active? And what is your agency doing concerning, you know, stiffer punishment for traffickers? I'm not sure the traffickers get a slap on their wrist uh, per se, because in the law, the minimum sentence is five years imprisonment and imposition of a fine. Um, and if I may correct you, the latest figure we have for those convicted is 396, as at yesterday. The figures have doubled in the last few months. And yes, um, right now we are, we are making um, plans to increase um, the punishment. We are looking at stiffer penalties from 
minimum 15 years to 25 years to even life imprisonment. And um, this is in the works. It's passed the second reading in the National Assembly, and then um, we're hoping to get it um, wrapped up as soon as possible. Well, there was a time you, uh, your agency collaborated with the uh, palace in Benin, the Benin Palace, uh, with the uh, Oba of Benin calling out uh, uh, some priests in the town to place a curse on anybody who, uh, you know, engages in uh, human trafficking. And then again, you know, I've read reports about your uh, agency working with uh, witch doctors as uh, volunteers. Uh, uh, what's it, could you please explain this uh, witchcraft dimension uh, to the challenge of uh, human trafficking? Um, okay. Um, you know, um, these traffickers are very tricky. And so, you know, they come up with all sorts of uh, mechanisms just to you know, keep their, their, their traffic victims, you know, under their control. And so there's this um, oath-swearing ceremony that they undertake before they take these girls out of Nigeria. Um, you know, when they swear the oath, they take some vital parts of their bodies, like their hair, their nails, their pubic hair, and things like that, just to scare them. They take them to this juju priest to swear that they would never divulge information concerning what has happened. They would not run away when they get to the um, countries of destination, and they would pay them what they claim they are owed, you know, in terms of uh, uh, millions of naira at the end of the day before they get, they get their so-called freedom from them. And so when we arrest, uh, when we rescue the victims, it's very difficult to get information from them because they are scared that they will die if they divulge information, you know, or, or harm will befall their parents or they will run mad, you know, because these are the stories that they are told. And so we, first of all, we went to the juju priest and we told them, look, you must be ambassadors for NAPTEP. This is what is happening to our girls. So you cannot continue to carry out these ceremonies or this oath swearing in your shrines. You must stop it. They gave us their words that, okay, they are now going to be ambassadors for NAPTIP, and they were not going to encourage it. And if they see women coming to do that, they will report to NAPTIP, and they will not carry out the oath swearing. But we didn't want to trust them and take their word for it. So I decided to lead a team to the Oba of Benin, and I told him what our worries were, what our challenges were. And the Oba of Benin promised to gather all the juju priests together because I wanted them to make that promise to the Oba and not to me. So I decided to go to him and persuade him to bring them together and talk to them about it, which he did. And trust me, once this was done, a lot of girls walked out on the madams in the various destination countries and lots of information leading to arrest of so many people were beginning to flow in to NAPTIP. And then um, we're working on the information and prosecuting as well. Well, increasingly, we are beginning to see um, live and work abroad offers, very eye-popping offers for these impressionable young ones. Is this something to be suspicious about? Are there particular destinations uh, young Nigerians need to be wary about? And is NAPTIP, uh, you know, suspicious of this eye-popping offers we are seeing? Absolutely. These um, live and work abroad are just ways of luring Nigerians to be trafficked. I mean, it's all practically almost almost all countries, you know, are, 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 are you know involved in human trafficking. I, I believe all the countries in the world are involved in human trafficking. You know, there's no country that is free of human trafficking. So these are very suspicious offers, and we keep telling people when you are offered work abroad, it won't cost you anything to just ask NAPTIP so that we investigate it because most of these offers, if not all of these offers are very suspicious offers, and they are very fake offers. So Nigerians should be very wary of offers of leave and work abroad. Please do not take up such offers. Well, quickly, before we let you go, you said uh, Edo and Delta states are the uh, states uh, of uh, great risk uh, in terms of this uh, issue. Um, I know that uh, many of our compatriots from Edo and Delta states, even if the information is accurate, I uh, would not be too, too happy with that. But apart from Edo and Delta, where, where, which other states, uh, you know, uh, have you discovered very high rate of either human trafficking or modern slavery, according to your own investigations? Yes, I said Edo and Delta ranked number one and two. That is not to say it's only Edo and Delta. 
all the states in Nigeria, the 36 states without any exception, are, are, are complicit in human trafficking in the sense that we have the hum, internal human trafficking, we have some states that are specialized in, in internal in human trafficking, and then some states external human trafficking. Apart from Edo, Delta, almost all the states. In West Africa, for example, you have states like Bielsa, Akwa Ibom, um, 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 Cross River State. In um, places like um, Spain, France, you have people from Enugu State, you have Imo State. They are from all over. All over. All the states, all 36 states are endemic. It's no longer an Edo Delta state. And that is why we plan to send to set up task forces in the 36 states. No one should be in denial. Every state of origin is involved. We have thousands of Nigerian girls from all the states that are stuck, you know, in, 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 in trafficking situations all over the world. In the Middle East, for example, you have people from the northern part of Nigeria. They take them out under the guise of giving them jobs as housemates. We get distress calls every day from these girls begging us to save them, you know? So every state, every state is involved, and they should take it very, very seriously. The state governments must up their games when it comes to human trafficking, the fight against human trafficking, and not be in denial that it's not happening in their state. It is happening in your state, and you must take it up violently. Well, thank you very much, uh, Director General, the uh, National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons. Thank you.